and welcome to another video. Today I'm just going to have a casual catch up with you to talk about some of the books that I've been reading lately. Here are the books Foster by Claire Keegan, I Capture the Castle by Doty Smith, The Tawny Man Trilogy by Robin Hobb, and The Letters of Enchantment Duology by Rebecca Ross. So let's start with the smallest and most emotionally impactful book in this pile, and that is Foster by Claire Keegan. This book is under 100 pages and it's really more of a short story in a novella format. We're following a young character who is growing up with many siblings in a poor farming household in Ireland and this little girl is adopted for a, about a year by this older couple who have longed for a second chance at being parents. They have lost a child in the past and they're still carrying very fresh grief from that. And so the opportunity to care for this little girl really becomes something healing for them. And it is just such an emotion filled story. It's very memorable, even though it is so short. This was my first experience with Claire Keegan's writing and it's quite beautiful and I'm looking forward to trying a few of her other books. The next one that was quite the surprise for me was I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I believe it's set in the 20s or 30s in England and we're following this eclectic little family a uh, father, a stepmother, two sisters, and a brother, and they are growing up in the ruins of this estate, this castle, and they have a small house that is inside the curtain wall of this ruin. They don't have a whole lot of money. The father had one incredibly successful book, but he hasn't written or published anything since then, and so the family is kind of just living on the remainder, they've sold off a lot of their furniture and possessions over the years to get by. And our narrator for this tale is a buddy young writer, Cassandra. And Cassandra is writing in these notebooks. She journals about what's going on in her family and her aspirations for the future. And something arrives and could potentially change not only her future, but the rest of her families. And we just get to be there experiencing it with all of them. So this is a lot of fun. I would recommend it if you liked books like Five Little Peppers and How They Grew and Pollyanna or A Little Princess. This isn't necessarily a children's book because there is some content in there that I would say is a little bit more adult, but it still has children as our main characters. If you like to read about writers and if you have aspirations of writing yourself, you can kind of see as our main character is coming of age, she's also coming into her own as a writer and it's really fun. I gave this one five stars and I think it's well worth your time if you would like to give it a try. Let's talk briefly about the Tawny Man trilogy. Not give you spoilers if you haven't read anything from this series, but in this trilogy, we are back following Fitz, who is the main character of the first trilogy in this series. And in these three books, we are back with Fitz and Fitz has kind of gone from a period of his life where he has been questing, he has been trying to make things right, he has risked life and limb in order to do so, and he's kind of in a period of rest which has turned into a little bit of complacency. Um, he kind of is contented but still unsettled in his inner man. Something happens that kind of activates him again as a hero. It activates him again as someone who can have dreams and ambitions and he also is going to have to be kind of activated as a protector once again. In this trilogy, we get to see Fitz become more of a mentor figure, a father figure. He gets to kind of play out those roles where in the past he was the recipient of that experience. He grew up without a close father um, in his life and so he's had models that kind of stood in that gap for him and he is becoming that for a couple of other characters. Ultimately, I think what this trilogy achieved is propelling Fitz to yet another milestone of growth as a character 
and also just putting him in a place where we as the reader feel more settled. He was kind of taken off the stage for the Live Ship Trader trilogy and we didn't know exactly what was going on with him and so getting back in his area of the world was fun. I would give this trilogy as a whole maybe four stars and I think I liked the third book the best which is kind of unique. Usually I like the first or the second the best when it comes to trilogies but for this one the third I think was my favorite. Not my favorite of the whole series, I still like the first trilogy the best. One more series related update. I read Divine Rivals at the end of last year and I loved it and I could not wait to get to read book two and when I did read this one it concluded everything that had started up in the first book but I honestly felt hungry for more. I wish that this was actually a trilogy. It felt like there was a lot of last minute world building that happened in this book and there could have been more development I think not only with the main character relationships but also how the lore of the world and the boundary lines between their daily life and this kind of mythical stuff that's happening uh, interacts. It felt rushed. Although I was excited because I wanted to be able to know the resolution of kind of like the main problem here. Having everything end in 300 pages was a little tight. I would give book two maybe like three stars and I really liked book one. I would give it like four and a half, five stars. A little bit of a pet peeve. It feels like kind of dumb to share but the author used the word limbed a lot like when light frames a person or an object I felt like she really loves that word and she used it like a lot in both of these books where I don't see that a whole lot in other books like it would not be used that frequently maybe like once or twice <laughs> in the entire book but she kind of used it like every chapter. Another word that I don't see as often is the word drawled when it comes to conversation. And because this felt like a UK sort of setting, um, I couldn't really imagine how that impacted the character's accents, what that actually sounded like, and so it kind of just threw me off whenever that word appeared. Um, if it was them saying the word longer, like dragging out a word, if that's what she meant, there were other ways that that could have been expressed in the conversational dialogue but those are just my two like kind of tiny things that I, I that became annoyances I would say when I was reading these two but again I really like the premise and I loved book one I think book two was a little bit of a letdown but overall the duology is probably worth your time those are the best of the books that I've been reading lately I read 12 books in the month of January and these are just the best, the most standout ones so far. I'm having a good reading month. How about you? Have you been reading some good books? Are there any on this list that you have differing opinions on? Please drop a comment below. Let me know what you're looking forward to as far as booktube content this year, what has been catching your interest, and I will see you in another video soon.